Just a, a slight explanation of uh, that phrase within my title, academic unit. Um, I am here from the Institute for the Study of the Ancient World at New York University. And yes, um, coming from our website, I saw as a center for advanced scholarly research and graduate education, which aims to encourage particularly the study of the economic, religious, political, and cultural connections between ancient civilizations. I won't read the whole thing, but that's uh, directly from our website. Um, so purely for correctness, we are not an academic department. But in many ways, we look like one and act like one. I think many people in this room would be comfortable coming to ISAW. Um, and while it is the case that we do have some uh, flexibility financially, I want to stress that the main cost of what I describe is the indirect one of my time and that there are really no direct costs associated with the digital aspects of what I'll talk about. Um, back to ISAW. Uh, in 2007, when we were founded, and uh, even more so now, the idea of encouraging connections was easily understood as embracing the internet to communicate. And I again thank Roger as our finding director for, uh, for, uh, for being the person doing much of that embracing. Um, publication of scholarly work is, of course, essential to our mission. And so when you put those two things together, the internet and publication, digital publication was recognized, again by Roger, as something that ISA uh, ought to pursue. Um, skipping to the present, that brings us to today, when we have two main digital publication efforts. And I'd like to be clear that at ISO we have multiple digital efforts. Um, I'll note that one of them, the Pleiades Gazetteer, is receiving the AIA's Award for Digital Excellence in a room approximately the size somewhere else in this large hotel. So I congratulate my colleague uh, Thomas Elliott for that. Um, but today my focus is really on our work to publish original scholarship often peer-reviewed, overlapping with what uh, Roger, uh, the stage that he set. Um, digital scholarship, often peer-reviewed, that is available at no cost on the public internet. And today, right here as I speak to you, the two main efforts are um, both, which, both of which use Creative Commons licenses, a topic I'd really be happy to uh, engage in in part of the conversation, are I Saw Papers, which are article-length works published via the NYU Library website, Born digital, only digital. You can hit print if you want to, but they are, they are online. And then book length works, which are distributed in print by the NYU Press, but also made available, as I'll show, um, on the NYU uh, Library's website. Um, very quickly, were you to go to the ISAW website, this is the page you would see for um, ISAW papers. Here's a little test. Is the internet working? Yes, it's flowing quite quickly. Fantastic. Um, you'll, we have, if, if I, can I expand this just a touch? Uh, we have published 11 ISAW papers to date. I won't allow myself to be distracted by scrolling down. Um, is that more, less than two a year, more than one a year? But I have a good bunch coming out um, in 2017 to sort of uh, collected sets of papers. And I'm, I'm uh, looking forward to uh, get um, those out. Uh, so good, the internet is working. Um, uh, we also publish, uh, as I said, book length work. And it's very important that we um, treat those as first-class digital citizens, but we recognize that there's still a demand for people to have something nice in their hands and holds. We are, you know, I'm an archeologist. I believe in material culture, books and material culture. We are happy to produce it so long as there continues to be a market for it. And I think we've, recent trends have shown that there really does continue to be a market for it. So you can buy this book. I, in fact, I will stand up here. I will encourage you, go buy this book. Um, uh, and you can do that um, by here. And then, so, so an, an Oasis City, is uh, uh, one of Roger's recent books that we have put out both in print and online. Uh, Ancient Jewish Science is another one. Again, not to go through the whole list, but really is all available uh, on the ISAW website. Um, I just want to focus uh, a touch 
on, uh, zoom, zoom in on the screen a little bit to the links that are next to um, an Oasis City should you go to our website. Publisher that takes you to the NY where you press where you can find out more about it and I believe link directly to buying it from them, hopefully not from Amazon. Uh, WorldCat, is it in your library near you to try to make that, uh, try to make that functionality available? And then JSTOR and full text, perhaps of more interest to us here uh, this evening. Um, JSTOR, uh, yes. Um, because of a relationship that the NYU Press has with JSTOR, we deliver them a print-ready PDF. They turn it into a book, and they also pass it along to JSTOR, and uh, it makes it available. It may be that I have left this image up on the screen for some of you to note that um, when I screen took, you know, went to JSTOR and logged into the NYU library to try to get it and show it, I am told, your institution does not have access to this book on JSTOR. And some of you will recognize the NYU logo right there. My institution doesn't have, so, so um, allow me with um, some humor in mind to suggest perhaps this is a hiccup in the system and it really isn't the case that we don't have access to our own books. Or if it is the case that we don't have access to our own books, golly, that's odd. So, so it's fodder for conversation of a type that, 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 that comes into, into um, events like this, more generally, the existing structures of publication, academic publication, can lead to barriers to access. That is true. Um, so, yeah, we have this print version. Yes, it goes as JSTOR, but just putting a PDF on JSTOR, that isn't quite what we mean by digital publication in uh, 2017. So, um, our response to that is to take the text of Roger's book and other books and to turn it into a well-structured HTML file. Happy to have somebody ask me, why are you using HTML? Um, and to put that directly on the internet using uh, the, the good services of our partnership with the NYU library. They have assured us that this web address here will continue to exist, but just as a hint of giving us as their partners and you as readers even more confidence that that is the case, they generate a handle for this, another technical aspect not to delve into deeply, but a handle is like a DOI. This should be, you know, if, if that goes away, we have bigger problems than people just not being able to read, read, read this book. So, so handles, handles exist. So I will click on that again and show you, you know, an Oasis City by Roger and his esteemed, uh, esteemed uh, co-authors is available. Uh, yes, this is somewhat spare looking layout, but it is robust. I'm confident that it's going to work 50 years from now should that file still be available. And, we very, and the library is taking responsibility for that being the case. Um, Amhida in its surroundings, chapter one, all the images, all right there. The one thing I do want to show you, is, and this is a theme that I will return to, I don't know how small this is, but if I, if I hover over a paragraph, I get a little bent, arrow and assuming the keyboard is close enough to be the same, I can say copy link. So copy the link to, into the publication, go paste, and it will take me back there. Just a, just a demonstration that using simple, straightforward, you know, W3 or, you know, the internet as many people perceive it, just common patterns of behavior in there enable deep referencing uh, and robust referencing into our publications. Let me, um, we don't need to see this page. This was if the internet wasn't working. I was going to show you, I could show you just a little, little brief page from that. Okay, so um, last night, I put out, I tweeted this. In my AIA SCS talk, I'll highlight tweetable sync links to ISA NYU digital pubs by showing screen capture of this tweet. I had to get it to fit into 40, 140 characters, right? Zero right there. What am I doing there? Well, again, um, I want to show that our scholarship is of and on the internet in a really robust way. Now, uh, I, we can completely avoid whether 140 characters is sufficient for a rich scholarly conversation. I think we can also, we can't avoid that Twitter is a powerful tool and seems to be affecting history right now. So um, I do not mind using this, uh, you know, I went from here, I clicked, that brought up this page, here's a tweet. 
to a link into ISOL Digital Scholarship, and you again, you know, write back, you know, to a particular paragraph. So, should it be the case that an ISOL Digital publication, you know, rises rises to influence something like, say, a presidential election down south, we're ready. You know, we're ready for somebody to tweet this out and and not get not go to a blob or the front page, but be taken right directly to the bit of scholarship that they want. It's much more likely that I hope people put those things in their footnotes and go directly to paragraphs. Just as you cite a page, you can cite a um, an ISO, a paragraph in an ISO volume. Um, you can. Are people so we're ready? Are people showing up? Um, we have a preliminary indication that yes, you know, if we build it, people will come. So what you're seeing here is a, a screen capture of searching in Google Books for I saw papers, one of a number of searches that I could do. Um, and you see, you know, 2016, this is right, public 2015, inscriptions in the private sphere, uh, 20, uh, this is, uh, yeah, 2014, a number of books that are all, you know, our scholarship is participating in conversations, and that is what we want it to do. Um, this, the reissue of, of uh, Garnsey and Saller, I saw a paper, makes a reference to I saw papers three. Um, and then again in Google Books, search for ISO papers Brandsburg to bring up references to Gilles Brandsburg's um, Rome and the Economic Integration of Empire. Again, this is what it looks like should you go to the ISO uh, website, the, sorry, the NYU uh, library website. These are books published after 2012 that have made reference to that, incorporated this digital online journal into their conversation. I particularly note Peter Temin's 2013 volume, Dr. Bransberg was offering substantive critiques of Peter Temin in 2012. Peter Temin addresses those substantive critiques in 2013. I'm not going to get into right or wrong. I'm saying as an, as an editor, as co-editor working with colleagues to get this on, this is why we do it, you know, so that people go back and forth. So it doesn't matter whether it's digital or not. I like to think that maybe the fact that we got it out there quite quickly and that meant that it was able to be read quickly and people started referring to it. Um, so yes, we have, you know, traditional uptake of this scholarly work. I don't have any impact studies for you. I don't know the H index of this or that, but, but, but people, but nor, nor do I need to. Um, but I've also, like, just as much like, you know, enjoy and get a kick out of the fact that Sarah Bond and Christina Kilgrove um, took, I saw papers for the Cosmos and the Antikythera Mechanism uh, by Tony Fries and Alexander Jones and uh, read it aloud, recorded themselves reading and put that up on iTunes as a podcast. And in terms of reaching other audiences, you know, that's great. And I would just like, quickly paraphrase the conversation. Sarah writes me an email, is that okay? To which I say, yes, it's okay, but by the way, you don't have to ask me because the, uh, the text of the article is up there as a Creative Commons by license. I don't know that it mentions audio rights in the Creative Commons license, but it mentions all, you know, it lets people do everything. So I was like, this is gonna be a really short email exchange because yes, and you do really, it could have been even shorter because you inherently have permission to go, you know, perform this and put it, put it up on, uh, put it on, on iTunes. So, you know, I, we, we love this kind of thing. Didn't occur to us. Our information is out there in such a way that people can do things with it. They don't have to ask us. Courteous too, but you know, and, and we're all we're all colleagues here, so I'm sure people will let us know what's going on. Um, but you do not have to. No copyright gymnastics is uh, what I would like to say there. Um, we also, just for fun, let me say that we're um, you know without trying to be too. Oops, here. Um, sorry, wrong. I clicked there. We, without, as I talked about robust and stable uh, standard-based um, documents, uh, we, do, we do want to not go to the bleeding edge, but just explore that a little bit. And um, taking a little model load, uh, I'll talk a little bit. There's an animation in there of the Antikythera mechanism of, of, of some of the gearing in there that is incredibly cool as, as the scholars are trying to address the extent to which you could accurately map the, you know, uh, model the faces of the moon as visible from the Earth. Um, but it looks like it's not going to come up, so I'll just uh, keep I'll keep moving ahead. So we're not incredibly fancy, but you know, using HTML5 video tag, I am confident that this is going to be readable going forward. And anyway, I have the files from which they made those animations, as those are available. Um, uh, you know, if, if you if you dig hard enough, you can find those as well. But I'll keep. Uh, 
I'll keep going forward. Um, okay, uh, ideas of what it means to you know be engaged in this, not just putting this stuff out there and so people can read it and 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 only thinking, oh, it's cool that people cite it, getting a kick from that, and it's kind of like somebody clicking like on a Facebook post if somebody cites you in an article. Um, we want to explore how it is that we are making the, this information available. Uh, good. This is this is not quite as bulky as an animation. So I've been working on sort of a, a lightweight, fast uh, search tool that I can show uh, people. And I'm, I'm going to go back quickly here and say, I'll show you full text, then searching only in figure captions, and then um, what I call LOD, linked open data links, uh, that is our explicit references to other, re other resources that are out there on the internet and how I can try and take advantage of the work that we've done to, to create those links. So let's go and uh, see that just a little bit. Um, so yeah, if I'm, I'm gonna expand this and what exactly that will do to the interface, we will see. But you know, I'm gonna, I'll, follow the, I'll follow my own instructions here. Try Ivory, Grain, or Homer. Uh, so if I type in uh, Ivory, yes. You know, we have, see a reference to an article, a new Roman sword from Sacnopayu, Nessos, El Fayum, Egypt. And I think if we go down, um, let me search in the screen. I am now, I'm convinced, yes, I really do need to have in text hiding, talking about the pommel and the different materials from which sword pommels are made. If that's your thing, you can find it. Um, and then f even further down, Axum and Nubia, um, uh, uh, that's one of our books. So the integration between our books and our articles, finding keywords, um, and then we can search for, I'm t I just typed Homer, um, uh, it works. Um, figure captions. I'm going to make this a little smaller. Uh, it can be nice to do things like search for hoard. And um, when I click on here, again, that infrastructure whereby we are taken directly to the reference in there. The images are being slow to load. Um, let me go back uh, here, come to one that may not have quite so many images. Um, the urban landscape from this is this is in uh, this is in Roger's book. Um, hit return. Yeah, images are the slow loading of images is mucking things up a little bit. You'll have a much better experience of being taken directly to picture of a horde of tetradrams found um, found uh, at, at, at Tremithus ancient Amhida, um, and then uh, just one more. One more type of search that we enable, um, this uh, linked open data links. So should you want to find all the references to Pleiades URIs that are in there, Pleiades, the, historic, the gazetteer of ancient historical places, you know, it will make that clear and explicit and allow you to find those quickly, or perhaps you're more interested in, uh, you, what did I say to myself? Um, URN, CTS, uh, and this will bring up all the Perseus Project stable links that I have uh, put in for textual references. Um, there, I will admit there is a certain amount of aspiration in doing this. It takes, you know, I have to go and, and, and hand code in those links. And, my, and, and can somebody do automatic processing? I'll get to that in just a little bit. Um, but it is this kind of ability to, to um, put the data out on the internet, to have it be readable, to reformat it into, ex into ways that are, can be dropped into tools like this to let people try and do things with it, to let me try and make it searchable, to let you guys try and find things um, that I want to explore uh, and, and in, in terms of putting this material out there. This should feel raw to you. In fact, I was working on it last night. Um, it should feel like I'm you know, gathering together just basic pretty plain looking uh, website and trying things and making them available. That's one of the aspects of doing this kind of work within an academic unit. I can you know, lower the barrier for sharing both the product itself, 
I send it to the library and it comes up, and also creating a tool like this. I am essentially taking advantage myself of the fact that this is Creative Commons licensed material to just do things with it. And I stress that because um, if you don't like what I'm doing, you can go and do something else. All of this material is available inherently on the web under a Creative Commons licenses, license. I have also put it on GitHub, just where you know, the cool kids now share their stuff. I'll put it somewhere else five years from now. Um, so without delving too much into technical aspects, um, the policy aspect is that when somebody says, can we do this, can I do this, whether it's making an iPod, uh, you know, a, a, a um, video, audio recording, or some new search tool, our answer is yes. And in fact, it's not our answer, it's the licensing regime's answer in which it's out there. Yes, you can. And if you feel that I have some way not made my av information available to you in a way that is amenable for your own usage, talk to me and I'll try and help you. So, coming to um, latter stages. Uh, what are our goals? Uh, to contribute to ISAW's academic research mission, to have this work be embedded within the uh, research goals of the institution, um, to use robust and flexible uh, standards, XHTML and, and CC licenses, a range of other ones, uh, to be permanent. And there, we're very grateful for our um, partnership with uh, the NYU Library um, in taking on that. And for the work that we are doing to be an object of research itself. So this evening's event, showing this, getting reactions, seeing what people do, encouraging people to, to, to work on things. And I just want to sort of roll that this series of lists back up to the top and say, by contributing to ISOF's academic mission, not just research mission, to, to teach our graduate students how to do these kinds of things as well, should they want to learn how to. That would mean going underneath the hood into some of the deeper standards, RDFA, things that I'm not going to talk about that would have been inappropriate to talk about tonight. But to just, you know, recirculate through. Having digital scholarship be part of what, the, what ISA does in all of its aspects, reaching out to the world and working with our students as, as two opportunities. Um, things for discussion, questions, you know, there are non-digital costs in terms of producing a PDF. Um, my answer to, so if somebody asked me about that, my answer will include the name Andrew Reinhardt, who may be a person who's known to many people in this room. More on the W3 standards. Somebody might want to ask me, why not TEI? Very happy to, very happy to engage with that. In terms of the links that we are creating, I showed Pleiades, uh, Perseus catalog, um, but we also have links into Wikipedia, Wikidata, really? Yeah, really. Um, and and so, so I'm perfectly happy to engage in a conversation as we look for links between documents, but also links that allow common concepts to be discovered widely on the internet. What are the right vocabularies that should we, we be using? And then um, I kind of alighted over some of the subtleties of the ar archival version that we have and the presentation version that I've showed you. So I don't, I don't have time to go deeply into these things, but I want to make sure I'm not sort of selling you only snake oil. And yeah, there are some subtleties, and they have frequently have to do with this distinction between a long-term representation of the information. I'm very comfortable that this stuff will be available for a long time to come because of the NYU library and the specific functionality and how it looks on the internet and the relationship between those. Um, these, I think, are important questions but start to get me below my allotted time. Again, I look forward to talking with people about it, assuming we get some good conversation going after the contributions from my colleagues here. Thank you very much. Thank you.